is what it feels like to drive 155 miles per hour on a public highway. It's surreal, more like flying than driving. But this is the Autobahn. And here in Germany, driving like this is not only legal, it's considered a national birthright. It's one reason Germany has created some of the world's fastest and most remarkable cars, including the one I'm driving right now. It wears the blue and white logo of one of the most successful, envied, and copied companies in history, BMW. And it's a company we'll take you inside next. Munich, the vibrant hub of Germany's south, is one of Europe's most cosmopolitan cities. Tourists are drawn to its history, beer, and cars. On the north end of town is the headquarters of Bavarian Motor Works, BMW. And right next door is the BMW Welt, or World, the ultimate showcase for the car the company calls the ultimate driving machine. For fans, it's a high-octane stew. Whether they're curious about the company's early products, in the car culture, or like Phil and Pam Palisol, they've traveled over 6,000 miles to pick up their new Bimmer. My name is Palisol. They bought their car from a dealer back in San Diego, but BMW's European delivery program gives them a chance to tour the company's high-tech home before picking up their new sedan. Now all these facilities that we see here are state-of-the-art, the most modern on the market. It's just so futuristic. It's amazing how clean it is. BMW makes it a day-long affair, a kaleidoscopic immersion in BMW production, engineering, and innovation. For those who can't wait to see their new set of wheels and like a little anticipation, it fits the bill. Now let's leave the plant. We're heading back to the BMW bed. They do know how to build up the suspense here, don't they? What, what have you been thinking this whole, this whole afternoon? When do we get to see that <laughs> yeah, right. car? Do you think of the brand differently maybe now? It just is very friendly and open and gosh, now you're one of the team here and that kind of feeling that makes you go, yeah, I'm part of the team. You feel like you had a little Kool-Aid today? Maybe. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're serving it. <laughs> My name is Ulrika. Nothing about the Palisol's experience is an accident. Their entire day here has been carefully engineered into a kind of theater. Like everything BMW does with an attention to detail and design. You can see it in its architecture, in its cars, and in the way it's chosen to grow. At BMW, it's all about engineering, tightly meshed with design. That results in cars loved by people for whom driving itself is a pastime, according to Chubba Chetta. They've actually packaged a good back seat. Uh, He's the former editor of Car and Driver magazine. The best driving machine means that it's sporty that it's fast, that it has steering that as you're going around a corner and you hit a bump, it actually kicks back and you feel what's happening. Most cars aren't that way. Chetta believes that's the key to BMW's popularity. For 20 or 30 years, they've largely delivered on the ultimate driving machine uh, as a uh, brand statement. Really? So oh, it's, absolutely. it's effective marketing? Well, it's more than effective marketing. It's actually what they do. I think if you work at BMW in any capacity and you've got a decision to make, you can sit there and say, we're the ultimate driving machine. Which one of these decisions is going to advance that objective? 95,000 employees work for BMW in 15 countries. In Germany, they've made more than 2 million motorcycles in addition to cars. In England, the company owns two other brands. They make Mini, the sporty car that began life as a British economy model, and Rolls-Royce, a car at the high end of luxury with a price tag to match. BMW has decided that no matter the price, marketing segment, 
or number of wheels, the products they make, they say, will be premium vehicles that are fun to drive. But getting there requires a bit of fixation.